In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit this image to this using Lightroom. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm a Canon sponsored travel and street photographer living in Berlin. And in this video, I'm going to break down my editing process to show you how to create an amazing image. So let's jump right in. So that's the raw image that we are going to start working on today. And before I start the editing process, I wanted to say that editing is a beautiful way of presenting your work to the viewers. So there are literally no rules and there are no limits. So you can go crazy with your edit and really show the way you feel about your picture to your viewers. So that being said, I wanted to share a crazy story behind this picture. It was in my bucket list for a very long time. Few years ago, I saw a picture from this spot as my windows wallpaper. And ever since I wanted to take a picture of this spot. So finally, when it happened, um, I was on the way to the spot on, on a boat and it was raining crazy. As you can see in this image right here, uh, it was raining so heavy that I was worried I might not get any picture that day. And the second thing that happened uh, after I reached the spot, I realized I did not bring my ND filter. I forgot it back in my hotel room. So I was not able to take a long exposure picture here. But smartly, I took an underexposed image. By underexposing the image, I was able to retain all the crazy details that was happening in the sky, this uh, uh, cloud movement and fog. Uh, happening in the background and uh, shadows I was confident that I can bring it back during the editing process so that's why the whole image is dark as you see here uh, so the first step I would do is bring the shadows all the way up add brightness to it just to understand what are the details that I've captured in the image and what I'm gonna work with and the next thing I would do is crop the image to the required format uh, in this case I will crop it to Instagram format 4x5 and crop it just about there. And there is a reason why I crop the image in this way because I place the cabin which is the star of my image on the rule of thirds as you see here. And the next thing is that there are a few elements that are leading my eye to the cabin. So the first thing is that the mountain on the right side over here, if I follow the curves all the way around, that's leading to the cabin. And on the left side, this mountain right here, if I follow the curve, it's leading to the cabin. And the rock formation in the foreground is leading to the cabin. And naturally the ramp right here is leading my eye to the cabin. So I wanted the star of my image to be the cabin and all these elements are leading my eye to it. And this is what I will be focusing uh, during the editing process. And the next thing I would do is reduce the highlights a tiny bit, just again to show all the drama that's being happening in the sky. And whites, I will increase a bit like that. And blacks, I will reduce it a tiny bit. As you might have noticed that I did not touch the exposure and the contrast bar right here because Normally, I add contrast with my adjustments in the highlights and shadows and also in the tone curve, which I will show you in a minute. And the next thing I would do is add a bit of a texture because uh, there are beautiful details on the rock formation in the foreground and also in the cabin, which I want to emphasize uh, by adding the texture. And the next thing I would do is reduce the clarity a bit like this because by reducing the clarity, it adds a dreamy nature to the picture, which I really like. So I reduce the clarity a tiny bit. I don't adjust anything on the dehaze. I add some vibrance right about there and some saturation right about there. But immediately I notice that the green is more prominent on the mountain and in the water. In the water, uh, there is a lot of algae formation and that's the reason why it looks green, but it looks odd for my personal taste. So I will remove that later in the editing process, but before I wanted to add some contrast to the image. So I add three points in the tone curve, one for the shadows, one for the mid tones, and one for the highlights. 
So I reduce the, the brightness on the shadows just a tiny bit and add some brightness to the midtones and some to the highlight area. So what I did here is created a basic S-curve, a very subtle S-curve, but it does a lot of difference. Uh, if I toggle the tone curve, you will notice that this is before applying the tone curve and this is after applying the tone curve. So there is a bit of a punch to the image. And the next thing I would do is the HSL adjustments. And this is where most of the edit happens. And this is where I set the mood for the picture. So first step, I will reduce blues a lot because it was only affecting the sky and in the very background and there is no blue over here, so which looked odd for my personal taste. So I will reduce the saturation of the blue right about there. And I will reduce the aqua because I don't want the water to look green. And the green again, I will reduce it a tiny bit. And I will add some yellow to the green areas and I will reduce the luminance of the blue because I want the sky to look more dramatic and I will increase the luminance of the yellow and orange because these are the colors that play a major role in the foreground and also in the cabin so I wanted to bring those details out. The next thing, split toning. So this is the most interesting part of the editing process because this is where most of the photographers apply their signature tone. Every photographer will have a signature tone which they will add in the split toning area. So for me, in the highlights, I normally add some warmer tone and in the shadows, I apply a cooler tone. For this picture, I will add a warmer tone between 30 to 40 that's about right and some saturation that's good enough and in shadows as I told you I apply a cooler tone between 190 and 210 that's good and some shadows like that so now I've added some blue to the image to make it more natural and I apply some sharpness because I reduce the clarity of the image and I wanted to bring uh, the details on the places which I want it to be sharpened. So I will add some sharpening right there and I apply some masking because I don't want the sharpening to be affecting the overall image but just uh, on the edges of the mountain and the cabin right there. So I hold the Alt key or the Option key and I slide the masking all the way down just to the areas where I want it, it to be affected. That's good enough. And noise reduction, normally the way I work is I take the number 100 and I minus the amount of sharpness I apply over here. So in noise reduction, I apply around 36. So if I add 36 plus 66, it's about 100. So this is the way I work. There is no rule about it, but uh, this is just my personal way of approaching the picture. And the next thing I do is remove chromatic aberration. I always click this because if I don't apply chromatic aberration, what happens is there will be an ugly line running between the darkest point of the image and the brightest point of the image. In this case, if I don't apply the chromatic aberration, there is a, an ugly separation line happening between the mountain and the sky. So if I apply the remote chromatic operation, it removes the separation line. So when you are printing the image on a bigger size, this line will be very prominent and looks ugly. So I highly recommend you to click on the remote chromatic operation. And transformation, I normally click on auto, but in this case, I made sure the image is level by securing the camera on a tripod. Let's see if it makes any change. Nothing, as I told you, like I made sure the image is level, but when you're doing a handheld scenario or uh, walking in a street or something, I highly recommend you to click on the auto because it, uh, it corrects the image in perspective wise. And the next thing I would do is apply some vignette because I wanted the viewer's eye to uh, immediately see the cabin right in the middle. So I apply some vignette and this really helps for the viewer to see the cabin immediately. 
and some feather. So the last step of the basic adjustment that I do is camera calibration. I like orange teal feel to the image. So to add an orange teal feel, I normally move the blue primary towards this uh, teal side. As you can immediately see that the image right now looks more orange teal feel, which I personally really like. The next step, I move the green primary towards the yellow tones right about there and a tiny saturation. That's good. So we did all the basic adjustments. This is about 20% of your edit. I'm just kidding. But all the steps that we did so far are the basic adjustments. So uh, in order to finish my editing process, I normally play a lot with the local adjustments, which is the spot removal tool, uh, gradient filter and the radial filter. The first thing I wanted to do is remove the spots, remove this water drops right there and this leaf, which is a distraction. So I click on the spot removal tool. Normally in Lightroom, it doesn't do a great job. Uh, if it doesn't work out in this case, I will take the picture to Photoshop and fix it using content aware fill. But let's try our luck here. First, I will click over here. All right, that fixes the issue. And I will remove this spot. That did a good job, I, I believe. And I wanted to remove the water drop right here. So I click, bam, gone. And I click here once more, gone. Let's see. All right, still a bit right there. So we removed all the distractions happening right there. And now I wanted to add a radial filter on the cabin because I wanted to bring the details on the main subject. So I will add a radial filter right there to the size. Invert the radial filter, add some exposure to it, bring out the shadow details and reduce the highlights. Because when I apply exposure, uh, it adds brightness both on the highlight and the shadow part, but here I just wanted it to affect the shadow area. So I reduce the brightness on the highlights drastically. That's good. So we added a place of interest and we wanted to add one more radial filter to eliminate the distraction. In this case, there is a lot happening around the cabin. So I wanted to eliminate that by adding a radial filter right there and reduce the exposure a tiny bit. Again, reducing brightness on the shadows and bringing the details back on the highlights because I don't want the radial filter to affect the sky. So that's good enough. I'm still really not happy with the distraction on the logs happening over here. So I will apply one final gradient filter right about there and reduce the exposure a tiny bit. And then again, uh, reduce the shadow details and bring out the highlights because I don't want the exposure to affect the water in the foreground. So yes, uh, the edit is done. So I'm really happy with what I have done here. I, my eye immediately directs to the cabin. I, I hope you also feel the same way. So let's see the before and after. So this was an uh, image before editing and this is after editing. As you can see that we have uh, drastically changed the mood of the image and featuring the main subject of the image, which is the cabin in the middle. As I told you in the beginning of the video, editing is a way to show your work to the viewers and there's literally no right or wrong way to do it. So I did another edit just to show you the potential of the editing process in Lightroom. And in this case, as you see here, I have added this beautiful artificial light just by using the radial filter in Lightroom. There is no Photoshop involved in this. And the reason why I didn't show you this process because it's a bit more advanced technique and I wanted to make a separate video just to show this technique. So there are two versions right here. One which we edited and the next one with the light. Let me know which one you like the most. 
So yeah, that's it. And to save the image, I click on File, Export, and I normally save the image in the highest quality possible. And I'm not gonna change anything right here. And I upload it uh, using my iPhone because the quality of the image uploaded from iPhone is much better than uh, uploading it from your Android phone and Instagram. <laughs> that's the way it is. I've already saved that image. Um, so that's it. Let me know what you think about it. So that was a lot of information. And if you're still here, you're awesome. Uh, like this video and comment what was new in this editing technique. This will really help me to create similar content that will interest you. And the next video is gonna be really interesting. Hit the bell button so that you don't miss it. See you on the next video. Bye.